Good morning and welcome to Olympic National Park and former Lake Aldwell. For those of you who have not been down here before, right where my finger's at is where we are at when the lake used to be here. So you can imagine, if we had been here you know, five years ago, for example, we would be underwater swimming. With Lower Elwha Dam removed and Lake Aldwell gone, rangers take park visitors to places not seen in a century not even by the tribe who holds them sacred. We were told we have it in stories, but to be able to actually walk the land, to really have the power of the land itself speak, having that opportunity to walk the grounds that our ancestors had walked, taking that first step on those grounds is indescribable. It had that eerie feeling. As restoration of the Elwha River continues, tides of renewal wash across the homeland of an ancient people. The river itself is a cultural resource, and having that river system intact and restored again is going to help restore the tribe's culture and reinvigorate all sorts of things that haven't happened in years and years. It's been long overdue, uh, something of a hundred years of uh, challenges that our elders and our ancestors have gone through. The Elwha has been home to the Clallam people since time immemorial. I have some flake stone tools that came from the site here in the valley, but this is just this really small part of their entire material culture. The Elwha were one of the most sophisticated and complex hunter-gatherer cultures in the world. If you have full-time artists, then you're not having trouble feeding people and you're not having trouble keeping a roof over people's heads because they can afford to do that art. At the heart of the tribe's well-being was the abundance of salmon in the river. One of the major questions attached to dam removal is how many adult salmon will return to the Elwha? We're using this new technology, the sonar, and that it's counting the number of adults, specifically steelhead and chinook that are swimming up the river. You can think of it kind of like a flashlight of sound All going right. into the river, except it's actually 96 flashlights, highly focused. So we get sort of movie-like imagery, if you will, of these fish swimming by. The next time Chinook salmon enter the river, they'll have access to the entire watershed. They'll be able to swim right through glines and recolonize the entire river the way it was historically over 100 years ago. Just upstream, the remnants of Glines Canyon Dam will soon make way as crews prepare for a final blast. Scientists expect salmon's return to the Elwha's far reaches will jumpstart the health of its entire ecosystem. There were bears, there were eagles, there were all these critters using this watershed when the salmon went all the way to the headwaters. Salmon are a keystone species. There's studies from the Pacific Northwest that show dozens of different animals that use them. They are the fundamental building blocks of the ecosystem. Inside fragile eggs weighing just a fraction of an ounce each, hearts thrum to life in young salmon. They go to sea, they spend years at sea, and they put on all this mass and take up all these marine nutrients. And then they come back in and they, they die or they're moved around by wildlife and those nutrients are distributed in a pretty significant way into the surrounding vegetation. And on Elwha, when that was taken away, that's when the ecosystem started to crash. And now, they're starting to return. Fish moving past where the lower dam once held them back are already supporting new life. Our children are going to see a very different Elwha River than what we see right now. After decades of effort, a very different Elwha is only moments away. Safely distant from a demolition crew at Glines, park visitors share a moment in history and today is the day that they're doing the final blast. So this is a really exciting day. I'm really happy that you guys are out sharing this experience. We had our last blast on Glines Canyon Dam. And so we've essentially opened up the river for whatever wants to come up. The river's biggest and most celebrated fish are back. 
and they're already laying eggs for the next generation, just around the bend from what days before was the base of glines. Today we are doing a spawner survey of this section of the river. We can hear fish excavating their reds. You can hear the splashing as they're moving the gravels and creating their reds. I want everyone just to take a moment and stop and listen to this amazing sound of this beautiful river flowing because it is the first time in a hundred years that you can hear the Elwha River free flowing. It's really inspiring and humbling to really recognize uh, the power the river has in its own course and in, in its own meaning. Having the river itself be free as what we're, we're listening to today.